Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. You are watching Darie Willits. And I first wanna start the video off by just saying thank you to everyone, all of my new subscribers, all of those subscribers who were underneath the 54 mark for a good minute now, like dang near a year, two years, probably just a year. I've been very inconsistent. I was. We always have to be careful with our language here. I was very inconsistent with my postings for a good minute. But now I'm really trying to get into the swing of just, you saw how my nail got cut in my hair. I'm trying to get into the swing of being very a very consistent YouTuber. I am now a consistent YouTuber. Shout out to, you know, learning how to talk to yourself properly so you can manifest as you wish. So today's video is all about Moesha, specifically season one, because I'm I'm on season two right now. And I know I've been on Moesha for a good minute. I should have finished by now, but <laughs> I really enjoyed Moesha first season. I thought she was one gorgeous. Thank you, Brandy, for just being absolutely gorgeous. D was gorgeous. It was a lot of gorgeous, dark skinned black women which as I've talked about in my previous video, which you guys should all check out, I will link it in the description below. Now we aren't seeing as many dark skin, brown skin, unambiguous or non-biracial black women on the screen. So to have someone who is um, non-biracial, who is unambiguous, who is dark skin on the screen, and to have a whole family of that, we're not seeing uh, the type of family that most of the time we see on the screen where it's the dark skinned father, light skinned mother, light skinned daughter, um, dark skinned brother, and then, you know, dark skinned sister too. We're seeing a lot of, we're seeing a full dark skinned family. Again, it's nothing wrong if the family is mixed or everyone's different you know shades that's not the problem it's the fact that that's the only thing that we get to see on tv nowadays and it's very much um a reflection of what men specifically black men may be wanting their families to look like where you know you see your daughter as kind of like what you would want your what you see in like the perfect partner so she'll be lighter skin if not ambiguous if not biracial despite her parents being both black so so outside of that, outside of the family being beautiful, D was really, I think if there's one character throughout the show who's probably the strongest, it really is D. Because even in season two, I think D has the best lines. She's very just mature and she's very much, she like knows who her character is. Uh, D is the stepmother of Moesha and Moesha's mother has died. We don't know how she died or when she died, but she has died in the show. And I really love the motherly love that Dee tries to give to Moesha throughout this first season, as well as just like Dee understands that this is new for Moesha and she doesn't want to replace her biological mother, but she does want to be able to step in and be a motherly figure to Moesha. So it gives me very much like motherly big sister vibes. And I just think it was a really gorgeous like commentary on like how to really be a mother to young black women. And as we age from teenagers to young adults, and I think Dee was perfect for that role. Someone that I would also love to see in like a role like that in the future, I definitely can get that type of vibe from Lapita and Yango. I don't know why I just thought of her, but like if she ever played like a motherly role on tv for like long periods of time i think she would really be like the perfect fit for that so the father mr mitchell i think he's frank i think he's really funny he's just like any other dad you know dads are for lack of better words quirky i guess he's um he is moesha is a daddy's little girl and i relate to that because i consider myself a daddy's girl uh, so she basically is like, daddy, can I have this, this, and that? And I know some people will call Moshe spoiled. I just think that this is the first time we've seen a dark-skinned, brown-skinned girl get what she wants whenever she wants for no other reason than just because she wants it. And I think it's so cute and so adorable. And I mean, I want that for other girls all across the country just to be able to be like, hey, dad, can I please get, or like, you know, hey, parent, hey, guardian, is it possible for me to receive this? Just out of the fact that, like, I've been a quote-unquote good child. Like, I haven't done anything 
atrocious. I'm a very decent human being. I think that young people deserve to be rewarded for their, you know, good behavior. Moesha receives a Saturn for a gift from her father and Dee. And her father is a car dealership and he sells Saturns for a living. And when she receives the car, she was like, no, daddy, that's not it. And she kind of just walks off. And some people would literally consider that spoiled brat behavior. Because even when I was watching the episode, I was like, dang, Moesha is mad ungrateful. Because I'm never just turning away a whole gift. Even if that's not the gift that you necessarily want. Because Moesha wanted a Jeep instead. But again, I really think it's just because we're just so not used to seeing dark skinned and brown skinned girls turn away things. Like, we always just expect it to accept whatever we are given, and maybe that's just not what Moesha like. Maybe Moesha is just the type of girl that knows what she likes. So, I was, after I sat there and really accepted things for what they were, I was like, I think that's actually nice that Moesha denied having the car. And her father and Dee were like, fine, Moesha, you find a way to get your own car that you want. And you know what? Moesha ends up with a bad looking robotic bucket. It was just like a tin can like a container a tin container and you know what that's just what happens you know it's not bad that she gave up the Saturn it's just like you have to learn on your own that's part of being an adult that's part of growing up you know you realize maybe I should have just took the Saturn and stop not be as picky that one time you know save my pickiness for when my coin my bag matches how picky I want to be well one of my favorite episodes no this was my favorite was the episode with Matt and Moesha Matt was the little white boy his name is Andrew King Keegan Andrew Keegan in real life the guy the cute guy from 10 things I hate about you the one with the hair and like I'm pretty sure he was like wearing a white tank top throughout that whole movie but yeah basically Andrew Keegan has long hair in this and that man is beautiful okay he comes in and he's a childhood friend of Moesha and he's like hey Momo and I just love when guys have that like one particular voice like it was so cute to me and him and Moesha kind of like go on a date and they face like discrimination and the white girl's like Moesha how you get your hair like that and then another white lady kind of like gives them a bad order then a black guy pushes Matt so at the end of the day you guys should watch that episode specifically at the end of the day Matt brings Moesha home like the good gentleman that he is and kisses her goodbye and the reason it was so upsetting to me is because it was just like mad dang no you're not gonna dip out just because you received a couple comments and it wasn't even that bad for him to like want to leave like it was not that bad but again maybe it's different because i feel like discrimination is so common or not necessarily common but it's just like if someone makes a bad comment about you or you know it's nothing to like you won't leave me because someone gave us a, the wrong order of fries like dang Matt you fake so Matt turned out not to be a good guy but again I think the writers kind of wanted to test the waters with interracial dating first season and then kind of like they like punked out or not punked out but they kind of was like mm, let's not make this last like I have no idea why it was only one episode when that could have been at least two episodes I'm like dang you know we thought Matt was cute but it is okay because all of the guys in Moesha are fine. And the reason that they are fine is because this show started in the 90s. And we all just need to say a prayer for all the 90s men and how their sons look nothing like them. Again, every time I look at my mom, I'm like, man, you could have just had anybody that you wanted. All of our mothers, just the the options were just so endless. It was like more chestnuts, <laughs> Andrew Keegan. <laughs> It was a lot of options. I'm, I'm a, it was a lot of good options, okay? That they were nice looking, handsome men. Brad Pitt, all of them were, or is that, does that count as 80s? No, 90s. Just all of them were so handsome back then. So, a girl can only dream. Now, the relationship with Ohaji. The relationship with Ohaji between Moesha, Moesha and Ohaji is like first episode or something like that. And I think it lasts like, not their actual relationship, but like, he reappears throughout season one. It was it was cute. Moesha was kissing on him, and you know I was like, "Wow, Moesha, not you going on real dates." Like Moesha was going outside. I was actually shook. Like, wow, crazy. So she 
she gets to have this little fun thing with Mo um, Ohaji and then he starts dating this girl I think her name is Teresa and I just you know I like that there was no bad beef between Moesha and the girl that Ohaji chooses to continue dating because it's just like there shouldn't be no beef with that there shouldn't be no issues between you and the girl that he chooses um, and yeah, Moesha was so desirable by other men, by other boys. It was just like, you weren't a mini. <laughs> you just can't even get your jersey because you're not on the team for real. You know, like she had a lot of options, which uh, I don't want to spoil it. But again, I actually don't approve of her relationship with Q. But that's season two that we need to talk about. Yeah, there was just so many different options for Moesha. To, to see Moesha and Kim specifically be so desirable throughout the whole season was, I really loved it. Again, something that I don't get to see. One thing I don't like about how they did my girl Kim, I think she's very much, I think sometimes she can come off as more like a caricature than like an actual human being. And I... I know like they it was supposed to like help the show be funny but a lot of times the jokes towards Kim season one were so flat like and I was like is this not shot in front of a like I don't know if Moshe was shot in like front of a live audience or anything but the jokes were so the jokes in season one were like some of them were okay but like Moesha would tell a joke and then she'd be like <laughs> and you'd be like Moesha that one wasn't even funny <laughs> like so, I will say most of Hakeem's jokes are okay. They land a lot of the times, not all the time. But yeah, some of the jokes weren't funny. I think a lot of times they were just picking on Kim's weight. When Kim was really a baddie, like Kim was, Kim, Kim had a lot of people beat on the show, okay? That's all I'm gonna say. Kim had a lot of people beat on the show. She was really looking good to me. So when she was able to end up with her own boyfriend, season two, we were excited for that. And then also about, Kim, I didn't like how desperate she was for Hakeem. And also, hear me out. See if Kim and Hakeem's relationship resembles that of Dejanay. Dejanay. Dejanay and... Dang, what's that other guy's name? Dejanay and, and the other character, the guy character off of um, Proud Family. It was just like, she. they made it so Kim constantly be chasing Hakeem and it was just a bad look for her and Hakeem didn't want her because he kind of felt like whenever I need somebody, you know, Kim in my back pocket. So it was a lot of like desperation behavior that made it seem like maybe, Lil, not Lil' Kim, I'm screaming, maybe that Kim's self-esteem was a little bit low. So overall, season one was really, really great. I really liked it. Season two is... It's a little bit of a struggle. I'm trying to get through it. It's taking my time. But I'm very thankful that Netflix has put up all of these different black shows. Now, the show that I'm really waiting on is One on One. One on One. One on One actually better than Moesha. I actually, it's amazing. One on One is absolutely fantastic. That's the show that I'm waiting on. I know when it comes out, it's going to be great. But for now, Moesha is satisfying me just enough. So. Thank you guys for all watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and loved it. I hope you guys like, comment, and subscribe. And tell me what else you guys want me to react to, okay? Do you agree with my opinions on the whole show? Um, do you wish you've seen more out of season one? Are you going to actually try watching season one now that I reviewed it? Let me know. Okay, everyone? Thank you all and kisses. Bye-bye.